Uh, next article here. This one is a little bit older. I didn't realize the date on this before I sent it out, but I think it's still very relevant. Um, Shen and Temu drive 5% air freight spike. Um, and this was from last November, but it's still an ongoing thing, especially with more of the focus on, you know, the $800 loophole with the tariffs and things like that. And so Shen Moon Tam uh, are basically overloading the air freight systems and the shipping and the um, import. Um, what's the name of the, the import agency for products coming into the United States? So um, any thoughts on that, uh, Kevin? Have you seen an increase in air shipping rates or freight in general coming from overseas? I do generally see shipping. I've got stuff that should be arriving today by air. So I didn't really pay that much attention to how much it was compared to last time I did a similar um, shipment because it was a relatively small piece. Uh, but I do think that it's going to be interesting to see like with more and more people using to move. I mean, even my son been talking for two weeks about these Lego dinosaurs that he was ordering from China. I'm not exactly sure which website we bought them off of, but they're generic Legos that were dirt cheap and he wanted to get them because they looked cool dinosaurs. But, you know, I think we're going to start seeing more and more people looking for deals and with, you know, I, I, I feel like every time I go to the grocery store, I complain to my head myself about like, wasn't this just a dollar less a couple of weeks ago, whatever item I'm looking at. And so like people are feeling more and more of the squeeze. And so they're looking for more deals. And so I think they're going to, we're going to see more and more people going to places like Tim. Now Amazon needs to get a little bit more competition, I think, but I don't necessarily like that. It's like Tim or some of these off um, or out of the U S China owned facilities. They're sending to the United States and they're kind of using both loopholes. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese government isn't um, subsidizing some of that as well. Don't know that for a fact, but if I was to bet money, I would bet that there is some of that happening. I would almost have to guarantee it. I, I've never bought anything for Shinmu or uh, Shen or Temu. I keep combining their names. Um, but, you know, buying from AliExpress, for example, you'd mm. buy like a $5 item and then shipping would be like $2.30. And so right. You, you, you can't ship to Georgia from Florida for that price. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I, I can almost guarantee that it's got to be subsidized just with the volume they're doing, or they're just losing that much money in the hopes to, to make it up later. Uh, what do you think, uh, Leslie? So Todd, first, I have to say that Shinmu is brilliant, and I think we should all just start calling all of it yes. that. It's just Shinmu just means all those things, all those companies. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of problems because uh, the Chinese government is essentially a partner in every single company in China. And so there are subsidies that way that business owners here obviously don't have. And then uh, secondly, you know, our own postal rates and the postal treaties on and on, uh, unfortunately, give Chinese sellers a tremendous benefit um, they do. They don't have to subsidize to get that lower rate because of e packet. Um, and e packet is a tremendous problem. If there's anything, you know, sellers talk about organizing a, around different issues. If there's any issue that sellers in the U.S. should organize around, it is to get rid of the e packet rates for overseas sellers. And it's in the name of fair competition. We're not even talking about make it easy for the U.S. It's just fair competition because when something is coming from Shenzhen cheaper than from Iowa, that's a problem. Um, but I, I think you're, you're right, though, on the article. Um, rates are slightly up, yes, but we're not in peak. And people are going to be sending their inventory over for peak in the next, what, two, three months? Um, so you are going to see the rates go up more. Will that be because of the the um, shame move? Yep. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but that's that's a great question. And now you have uh, Amazon essentially inviting even more Chinese seller competition through this new 
uh, cheapo marketplace that they're going to do with slave labor products um, to compete against Amazon sellers. They're in the U.S. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I'm I'm not a fan. Uh, I I don't love it. It I don't know if y'all saw it a few months ago. Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live did one of the funniest sketches I've ever seen, and it was also heartbreaking. And it was making fun. Y'all should Google it seriously. And it was like an ad for one of these Chinese marketplaces, a fake ad about, you know, definitely not made with slave labor and, you know, definitely no chemicals in the clothes, you know, no, no arsenic at all. Um, and, and these products there, they don't follow our government rules or safety rules. Um, Got to mention slave labor again. Uh, but unfortunately, as long as we have this this avalanche of products coming in from those cheap marketplaces, that's one more way it's going to hurt Amazon sellers and and U.S. all marketplace sellers uh, who are importing goods. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you made a, a good point there. You know, we've got our um, a newborn baby that we're buying stuff for, and. We, at a minimum, when we're shopping for the baby, we make sure that the product is at least coming from a U.S.-based seller. Because if I buy something from a, a Chinese seller and the product is made in China, then, and something happens, I have no legal recourse. There's nothing I can do to reach them in China, but... If the seller at least is in the U.S., you know, they can be held responsible for their product. So it gives them a little bit more of a an interest to make sure that the product is safe. Yeah, that's a really great insight. And, you know, Rachel, I know you have thoughts on that, on this, on the safety thing with kids. Yeah, I, I have a lot of thoughts on this. I actually wrote a book on it. Um, I used to manage product safety for Amazon and um Basically, when I was managing it, they had this exact same concept of whatever people want to buy it, they can buy it. And my argument was that any given customer in the US, they don't know that what they're buying is unsafe. They don't know that what they're buying is likely to contain chemicals that are toxic to their children um, and toxic to adults too, but it just shows up in different ways. So for example, lead poisoning in adults shows up as unexplained aggression, um, depression, um, anxiety, uh, because the, you're not getting the kinds of, of minerals that you're supposed to get. Lead blocks those in, in your cells and causes permanent damage, lifelong damage. In children, it makes it to where you, you never actually develop your full potential. And so this concept of Amazon finally closing the loopholes on this stuff, for the most part, um, mostly you can find things that are safe unless someone's really good at tricking Amazon, which is, you know, the Unfortunately, the Chinese businesses are also really good at trick tricking Amazon in this way and, and providing them with the right paperwork, and it's still unsafe. So again, I applaud you for making that choice. I um, got in my business partner's face, actually, when he bought something off of AliExpress for his friend's baby. And I was like, let me tell you all the ways this can go wrong. And he said, okay, so I'll get them something else. I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, is, that is what I recommend. Um, I actually love Melissa and Doug. I was able to tour one of their facilities in um, China, and they test every single component before it even makes it to the production line. It is completely safe. So Melissa and Doug for the win, they're awesome. And this this whole concept of uh, Shimu <laughs> um, is just a, one huge example of how the laws that are written here that are meant to protect us, that are meant to make things better for us, are, are just so easy to circumvent. And um, I don't buy anything for my child um, and my children, when, when um, I had a stepchild, a stepchild as well, I wouldn't buy anything from them, uh, for them from sellers that I didn't know. Uh, I would always buy name brand stuff for the kids because you just, you just never know. I mean, we would handle so many recalls where, um, you know, just the yellow one was messed up because that happened to be the one where they used the cadmium. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it just makes it to where it's just not worth, it's just not worth it. And there is nothing about Timu or Shein that is worth it to me. I mean, if you want to wear your blood money cheap t-shirt, go for it. Uh, but I will definitely judge you for it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think most people assume or think that, you know, the government is making sure all these products are safe and that's just not the case. It's impossible for them to even inspect all of it. 
uh, to to catch anything. So you really got to take it upon yourself to be careful. Well, and especially these marketplaces that are shipping directly to you from China. I mean, no one's looking at any of that. And I want to give just a quick example of thought. Rachel actually jogged a thought for me. Um, I have a client who was selling a device that require has certain water flow requirements for the EPA and then additional water flow requirements for Cap- California, right? And they had um, sellers from China jumping on uh, competitive listings that were made to duplicate their listings. And when he ordered the product, none of them actually had any water flow. It was just 100% going through. And Amazon didn't catch it. Um the EPA said that they didn't have time. They literally said they didn't have time, so they didn't care. Um, California didn't have time and didn't care. And then after we complained to like a million executives at Amazon, they shut down that listing. And you know what happened? The products reappeared under another storefront name and another brand, like literally three days later. Um, so, you know, the the one of the miracles of Chinese selling that most of us know about is a lot of these sellers have dozens or hundreds or thousands of accounts so that if one gets shut down, they just move to another one. So everything related to product safety or any other law, another one was um, generic minoxidil products that these Chinese sellers were selling them and they didn't meet any of our standards here. None of them. And then Amazon would shut down the listing and they'd pop right back up. Uh, so there, there's a lot for, I think, all of us as sellers to think about and for the government to think about on product safety and these, you know, welcome it all in attitude that Amazon now seems to have adopted. It's It makes me kind of unhappy. Yeah, I, I for me, I think the, the only real solution is to basically close that $800 loophole and say everything coming from China is going to be subject to tariffs and inspections. And if any other country starts messing around, we're going to do the same thing to you. You know, it's kind of one of those things. If you give an inch, they're going to take a mile. So you got to set a a standard, set a, um, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but you got to tell them now that this isn't acceptable. We're doing this. If anybody else does it, we're going to do it to you as well. Well, I think it's important to remember this isn't just about like, it isn't even just about safety or um, trying to have a high standard. It's about competition because American sellers that are held to the rules cannot compete fairly uh, when the other companies aren't held to the rules. So they don't pay for testing or have higher quality ingredients. It's all about fair competition for sellers here in the U.S. Yeah, free market is the best, but uh, we don't have a free market when their government is subsidizing their shipping and who knows what else and not keeping up with standards. So got to do something about it. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.